Past generations have come before us and they've really made a difference in our city. They formed a remarkable city out of a harsh prairie. And the pioneers did that, the pioneers that came before us. They had commitment, they had vision, and can you imagine what they faced when they came out here? But they had this rare genetic code. I want to say rare DNA. They understood very clearly that it took risk to do what they needed to do. It took risk because they knew the reward was worth the risk. Part of their DNA, part of who they were. It's just the way it was. Start out ranching, cotton, and then oil. And now statewide, nationwide, I'm not sure how wide, but it goes pretty wide. Everyone knows Midland is oil. We all know that. Oil and gas. And now Midland, Texas is a very strategic, important city. We all know that to be true. We look at uh, so many facts, quite frankly. One is <coughs> right now, the United States is one of the largest oil and gas producers in the world, doing no small part to what's going on in Midland, Texas, to what's happened here in terms of the technology and the production. Technology was created here, developed here, changed the oil and gas industry. Permian Basin is critical and strategically important. By the same token, we, we have talked for years about millions of barrels of reserve underneath our crown and how important that was. Millions of barrels. We now know that's not true. It's billions of barrels. Strategically important, there's no doubt about it. They're saying now by 2023, they think, and it seems the numbers are right, that the Permian Basin will outproduce any of the OPEC countries with maybe the, maybe the exception of Saudi Arabia. It's just amazing, just amazing. And now there's some studies that show our reserves could be rivaling Saudi Arabia's. That's a big change from a few years ago. Strategically important. Midland is important to Texas. Midland is important to the United States. Really not debatable. But you know, we all know that. This audience knows that. We know it. But we also know that Midland is strategically, or not strategically, but geographically disadvantaged. We live out in the middle of West Texas. We're in this big state in the lower 48, and I mean, we're way out in West Texas by ourselves. We're five hours from Dallas, Fort Worth. We're five hours from our capital, Austin. We're five hours from San Antonio. We're five hours from El Paso. We're five hours from the mountains. We're really out here by ourselves. And we get lost in Texas. Texas is a big state. We get lost in this state. Population wise, Midland doesn't even reach the top 10 in Texas. Midland doesn't even reach the top 20 in Texas. Do we get overshadowed in Texas? Politically, we get overshadowed. In a lot of ways, we get overshadowed. It's just the way it is. We compete with Texas. But let's have a little fun with it. Let's wait a moment. Let's say we can magically move Midland Stick with me, guys. We're going to magically move Midland to another state. And I'm not talking about Midland County. I'm not talking about Midland, Odessa. I'm not talking about the Permian Basin. I'm just talking about the city of Midland. So let's magically move Midland to Connecticut. All of a sudden, Midland is in Connecticut. Now we're the largest city in that state. And if we're not the largest, we compete to be the largest city in that state. Think about that. Does Connecticut look at Midland different? I believe so. Do we look at ourselves differently in that case? I think we, do. we begin to look at ourselves differently, and we should. Same could be said of South Carolina. Move Midland to South Carolina. Once again, we compete to be the largest city in that state. Probably are the largest city in that state. Same thing. There are 10 states that are just like that, that we would compete to be the largest city in the state. We may be overlooked in Texas, because of the bigger cities, but we need to put it in perspective. 
to see exactly what Midland is and exactly what we're capable of. Now, I have to admit, when I was doing this comparison, I just assumed we'd, Rhode Island was the one we're going to get. I mean, Texas is bigger than Rhode Island. We all know that. We put seven Rhode Islands in the Permian Basin. So I thought, surely we'd be the biggest city in Rhode Island. That's not true. Providence is much bigger than Midland. Would be the second largest city in Rhode Island. And there's another 10 states that would be the second largest city in those states. So think about what Midland is in Texas, what it could be in the rest of the nation. It begins to put Midland in perspective. Even if you move Midland a couple of hundred miles to the west to New Mexico, which we're very close to and we're very akin to part of the Permian Basin, you go there, once again, we're the second largest city in that state. We're larger than Santa Fe by a lot. Would we view ourselves differently? Would Santa Fe or would New Mexico view ourselves differently? I think they would. But you know, that's part of what we need to look at ourselves for. Look at ourselves culturally different. Understand exactly what we are. We are strategically important. There is no question about that. We are geographically disadvantaged. And that's it, part of it too. And it ties right back into why are we what, what we are and the challenges that we face. The biggest challenges I think we face the Midland is really quality of place. Now, when I say quality of place, everyone in this room probably hears something slightly different. Some people hear parks, some people hear healthcare, some people hear schools. Those are all quality of place, and quite frankly, all of those things are true. Quality of place encompasses everything you've heard about today. Schools, hospitals, parks, outdoor activities, health issues, housing, health care, I mean, child care. There's everything is on that list that creates quality of place. Quality of place is why is what people choose to come to. Now we love Midland. Everybody in this room loves Midland or you wouldn't be here today. But we're painfully aware that there are a, a lot of people that have the opportunity to move to Midland that say no. In fact, there's a lot of people that uh, when they do move to Midland, there's one family member that those fingernails are in the pavement scratching as we're dragging them into our city. <laughs> now you're wondering how I ever got the Chamber of Commerce, I'm sure. <laughs> but we all know Midland. And I think it's important for us to see Midland for exactly what it is. Midland is a great place, but we need to work on quality of place. We need to be able to take risk like those pioneers that came before us to solve the problems. And we've been a little slow to take risks to go solve the problems. We've got this amazing resource, God-given resource under the ground. But we need to go take a risk on ourselves to go improve our city in many, many areas. But we need to search, we not need to search, we need to focus on a lot of areas. And, and when I say focus, I wanna be sure, there's a lot of times we all talk about and I've been guilty of it too. We say education is our biggest problem or our biggest challenge or our biggest opportunity, whatever word you choose to use. And I think no one would debate that. But we've got to hold on and look at the big picture. The big picture is simply this. If we spend a billion dollars on facilities to correct the education facility problem and still focused on academics, did the very best we could we still have a serious challenge, why? Because teachers won't move to Midland. We could build the buildings, we can't recruit the teachers. We can't get them here, why? Because of housing costs, housing availability, because of childcare, because of doctors, because of quality of life. Everything ties into quality of life. So we can solve, attempt to solve one problem, we're fooling ourselves. We can't solve the one problem at a time. We've got to look at them almost all together and have some courage to do that. Now, here's the good news. It's in our DNA to fix the problem. It's in our DNA, it's in our genetic code. We're equipped to take the risk as a community and step out and do this. We've got this amazing resource that we keep talking about underground, but we need to make sure Midland steps up and does what it needs to be doing. Now, right now, I would like to say, I guess a thank you is what I'd like to say. We've got a group led by Mayor Morales and others that are reworking on Priority Midland. Great, great 
bold new thing to do, exactly what we need to do. And I appreciate all the taxing entities and all the discussions going together. I gotta put this down so I can use both hands. Thank you, sir. But it's critical that we, that we get out of the discussion stage, the debate stage, the argument stage, the talking stage, the planning stage as quickly as we can and move into the implementation stage. And there's too many times in Midland it's been part of our culture where we extend the argument stage right into the implementation stage. And as Midlanders, we need to know that, well, for example, Bobby Burns doesn't get everything he wants. Grant Billingsley is not gonna get everything he wants. Laura Roman's not gonna get everything she wants. It's not going to happen. We're gonna to have to give as a community. We may not have the exact school bond issue I want, but I need to be there to fight for it. We may not see the exact same thing at the hospital that I think is best, but when we make a decision, we need to put Midland first and go to work. I think it's critical. Now, I will point back to a few things why I think we need to take risks to make our city better and why it's the right thing. Every time this community has stepped up to do those things, every time I look back in history, it's turned out better than we ever dreamed. Think about the water lines that we heard earlier today from Mayor Perry. When they began to think about getting the water here to solving that problem, that was the, one of the most amazing projects I have ever seen in terms of the speed and the efficiency and the way they got that problem solved. Turned out better than we ever dreamed. I mean, almost miraculous. If you really look at that project, do you agree, Mayor Perry? I mean, it's just amazing. Great teamwork because Midland said, we're gonna fix the problem. Well, look at our history too. Look at Loop 250. Loop 250, when we built that, I had a friend ask the other day, they said, Bobby, would you built that and open like the seven or eight overpasses all at one time? The friend said, did you ever dream or envision that road would be that busy? And I said, you know, I really remember the first day riding on that road and they opened them all up and there's a few of us out there. And I'll be honest with you, I was just hoping someone would drive on the damn thing. <laughs> well, they're driving on it. They're driving on it. It turned out better than we ever dreamed. Same could be said of the airport. Airport, struggle, 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 got it built, got it done. Airports turned out better than we've ever, ever trained. And the proof is, if, we, if we'd have known, we'd have built more parking for it. <laughs> we, it turned out better than we ever dreamed. Sports complex, look at that project and that tremendous growth from all the way around the sports complex, the impact of that. One of the best projects we've ever done. The impact is off the charts. Same could be said of the hospital. Look at the hospital, how much better it is than before. Every time Midland takes the risk, it's better than we ever dreamed. And you can go to Wagner Noel, you can go to Midland College, you just go down the list of projects. We should have the same DNA in us that we've seen in our forefathers. And I wanna point out a couple of leaders that I think illustrate this too. One is C.J. Kelly. Now, C.J. Kelly was a leader in the 60s and 70s and 80s, very much behind the scenes. But C.J. was the kind of guy that, he didn't take a lot of polls, he didn't ask a lot of opinions, he didn't, uh, he didn't have a lot of meetings. He started calling people and saying, we need to recruit Chevron, or we need to recruit Exxon, we need to recruit Southwest Airlines, and we need to get this building built. And he start putting teams together to get it done. Simply took the action. And today, I think we need leaders that don't seek a consensus, they build a consensus. Let me prove that. We, don't need leader, we need leaders to avoid seeking the consensus to start molding that consensus, telling us where we need to go and guiding us to it. The other leader that I think highly of right now that everyone in this room knows and you're probably way ahead of me is Tim Leach. But Tim Leach is that leader that, in my opinion, is committed to Midland, invested in Midland, and taking a risk in Midland and steps out and steps out and steps out and continues to do it. When we were opening the loop years ago, I still remember Tim telling me the reason he liked Midland is because Midland will take a risk because we see the reward is worth it. Midland is still in that position today. We see what Midland can be now. The potential of Midland is really off of the charts. It really is. It's remarkable what Midland can be. If we are like the people before us, 
and we are. Now, Midland fuels America. Can we fuel Midland? Yeah, we can. It's in our DNA. It's part of us. Are we willing to take the risk? It may be financial risk. It may be political risk. Are we willing to take the risk to make Midland better? Just watch Midland in the next decade. Just sit back and watch this city in the next 10 years. It's going to shock you. It is going to shock you. This city is going to be remarkable. I mean, we come from this dynamic past to a remarkable future. Just watch Midland. You're going to have fun. Thank you.